We're in German Street, in the heart of London, and this is where Garbo and Juan Pujol had his office. A saintly rogue and compulsive storyteller, at once innocent like Don Quixote and wily like Sancho Panza, he became the greatest double agent in history. But for this ordinary-looking but highly imaginative Spaniard, Juan Pujol, and the brilliant MI5 case officer who worked with him, Tomás Harris, the Second World War might have had a very different ending to the one we are familiar with today. Tomás Harris hired privately an office for his use and for Garbo. It was in this building, one of these buildings here, that they drafted the texts of the messages that were used so effectively to fool the Nazis about Normandy and the Normandy landings. Bujal began his spying career as a freelancer in Madrid and Lisbon, pretending to the Germans to be an ardent Nazi supporter based in London. MI5 first came across him through the decrypts at Bletchley Park, when in December 1941, Mavis Beatty broke the Abwehr Enigma codes. The British brought Pujol to this safe house in Hendon, where they gave him the code name Garbo, and set him to work as the new star of MI5's double cross system, which became so effective in the eventual defeat of Hitler. One of the key figures in bringing Pujol over to England was Tomas Harris's friend, MI6 officer Kim Philby. This is 14 Ryder Court. This is where Section 5, the counter-espionage section of MI6, had their headquarters from 1943 onwards. This is where Philby was based. And very conveniently for Garbo, for the Garbo operation, Garbo's office was just at the top of the street, German Street, right at the top there. So it's a very short walk for Philby and for Harris to meet each other at their separate offices. Half Jewish and half Spanish, Harris was a wealthy painter and art dealer. This is number six, Chesterfield Gardens. This was the home of Thomas Harris, Uncle John's case officer. Visitors described how the Mayfair house was decorated with Goya and Velázquez paintings and antique Spanish furniture. Harris's home was used almost like a private club by his friends, Blunt, Burgess and Philby, during the war. They used to pop around here, all of them, intelligence officers, MI6, MI5. Harris's wife, Hilda, was a renowned cook. Uh, and they had a very fine wine cellar as well. With German bombs falling on London, Harris and Pujol together created the MI5 double agent Garbo, inventing a fictional web of spies and informers for him with as many as 29 different names. These characters, including a mistress in the Ministry of War, an Indian poet called Rags, and a group of pro-Aryan Welsh nationalists, were crucial players in the Allied deception plan for D-Day and the Normandy campaign. Hitler himself read and believed Garbo's stories, and as a result, made decisions which were a direct cause of his army's defeat in France in the summer of 1944. This is Norfolk House in St James' Square. This is where General Eisenhower had his headquarters during the build-up to Operation Overlord, the invasion of Normandy. Now we have to imagine Thomas Harris, case officer for Garbo, running backwards and forwards between this building and his own offices in St James' Street and the Garbo offices on German Street, which are just, in the, in the, just a few blocks away over there. And he would have been coordinating with the men in the deception team of General Eisenhower, which was known as Ox B. So you can imagine a small group of men, Harris is one of them, who were running backwards and forwards in this small area, just a few streets in St. James's, and they're swapping notes and ideas. And they, together, are building up the huge deception plan for Normandy, what was so important and such an important part of the success of the Normandy campaign. 